Hey guys, and welcome back to our FP2 um, workthrough. So today, what we'll be doing is we're moving on to the last part of the chapter five. So this is the matrix algebra, and we're looking at the Cayley Hamilton theorem. So it's quite interesting. It's a very brief topic, though, a pretty brief chapter as well. And so these are the two mathematicians involved. So this is uh, Arthur Cayley, I believe that's his first name. And if you look, he's actually doing his best um, Professor X impression from X Men. So that's Arthur Cayley, and this is um, William Hamilton. So these are the two mathematicians that it's named after. So let's have a look at what the Cayley-Hamilton theorem actually does. So what it states is that every square matrix M satisfies its own characteristic equation. So if you're not sure what a characteristic equation is, be sure to check out our previous videos on uh, matrix algebra, where we did look at working out the characteristic equation. So that's the determinant of A minus lambda I. The other cool property to the Kayla Hamilton theorem is that it allows us to work out the inverse of a 3 by 3 matrix. Now you can work out the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix as well, but commonly what you'll see on FP2 exams is that you're asked to do it for the inverse of a 3 by 3. So you can do it for 2 by 2, but typically it's a 3 by 3 for your exam uh, preparation. So straight away, let's not mess around, let's have a go at an exam question, or a typical sort of exam style question. So the Kayla Hamilton theorem, so what we've got here is we've got a matrix M. So first off, we need to work out the characteristic equation. So remember, this is just a two by two matrix. So the determinant's quite nice. You just do this upper element here, so the top left, one minus uh, lambda times two minus lambda, like they've done here. And then you're gonna do the subtraction of these two elements multiplied. So minus four times three, which is minus 12. And we always set the characteristic equation equal to zero. So when you multiply these two brackets out and simplify everything, what you're going to get is lambda squared minus 3 lambda minus 10. And what they've also done is just, just to prepare the next part of the question, they've also worked out m squared. So this is just the matrix m times the matrix m again, which is equal to 13, 9, 12, and 16. Now what I would recommend, guys, if you don't have one, be sure to get a graphical calculator. You'll save yourself a lot of time and a lot of pain with these questions. You are allowed to use them. So I would definitely recommend uh, investing in one that has matrix properties on the calculator so you can do multiplication of matrices. It will save you a lot of time and effort. So we've worked out m squared, we've got our characteristic equation, we can now move on. So what we do now is we look at our characteristic equation. So notice our characteristic equation is lambda squared minus 3 lambda minus 10. Now what we do is we replace, so where we've got a lambda, we replace it with an M. Now, we do it with the matrix that we're working with. So it's matrix M, it becomes M squared. Typically, you'll be given the matrix A, so you'd have A squared. But in this case, it's M. So wherever you see a lambda, replace it with an M. So we've got M squared in place of lambda squared. We've got minus 3M in place of minus 3 lambda. And where you've got a constant at the end, so minus 10, just an integer, it's minus 10. We, re we replace it as a multiple of the identity matrix. So it's minus 10i here, where i is just the identity matrix. And it might seem intuitive, but just be careful here. Make sure this is the two, the identity matrix of what you're working with. So we're working with two by two matrices, so this is the two by two identity. And what we do is we just do a bit of manipulation here now and substitution. So minus 10 lots of the identity, so that's minus 10 times the identity, one, zero, zero, one. M is this matrix here, so we do minus 3 lots of that, so 1, 3, 4, and 2 times minus 3, and then we add on M squared. And what you'll find is if you actually perform these calculations, what you end up with is the 0 matrix, so 0, 0, 0, 0, so just nothing in the elements. And that's what the Kelly Hamilton theorem states, that the characteristic equation is satisfied for a square matrix. So this demonstrates the Kelly Hamilton theorem and it also shows that it gives you the zero matrix like that. So this, like it says here, this result just illustrates the Cayley Hamilton theorem. So let's have a go at another style question. We can also manipulate the algebra as well. And this is, again, one of the other cool properties of the Cayley Hamilton theorem. So for example, we've got the matrix A. So like I said, it's typically matrix A. We've got one, two, three, and minus three. So for the first part, we're asked to find the characteristic equation of A. So the characteristic equation, remember, is just the determinant of a minus lambda i. So if we do that, it's just the two by two matrix again, so it's quite nice. It's one minus lambda times minus three minus lambda, like they've done here, the product of two brackets. And then they've done minus three times two, so minus six. Again, we set it equal to zero. 
So our characteristic equation is lambda squared plus 2 lambda minus 9. And this is equal to 0. So if you want to take a, a pause here, guys, and have a and see if you can carry on from here, be sure to do that. But if not, we're going to move on together. So next step now, we apply the Cayley-Hamilton theorem. So by the Cayley-Hamilton theorem, what we can do is replace our lambdas here with a. So what we get is a squared instead of lambda squared. We get 2a instead of 2 lambda. And we have the constant here, minus 9. So it's minus 9 lots of the identity. Next step, we're going to rearrange it in terms of a squared. Now, we need to get the a cubed here. So we're going to rearrange it to give us a squared first. And you'll see why in a second. So we rearrange it to a squared, like so. So we make it a squared. So this is, this is equal to 0. Again, don't forget here. I should have put that in. But this is equal to 0. So if you take it across, you're going to get 9i minus 2a. So now, if I just jump ahead here, um, just to save room, we need a cubed. Now, if we've got a squared is equal to 9i minus 2a. To get a, a cubed, all I've got to do is take a squared and times it by a. So if I times this side by a, I must also times this side by a. So they times it through by a here. So 9i times the matrix a. So if you've got the identity and you times it by a, you'll get the matrix a. So that's like what we've got here. Um, so we've got a cubed, so they've times it by a, 9a, so they've times this by a, and then if you times minus 2a by a, you get minus 2a squared. And then finally, all we need to do is substitute 1 into 2. So we're substituting now this a squared into our a cubed. So where we've got 9a, you're going to put the matrix a, and then the a squared, if you notice, we've got a squared here. So it's 9a minus 2a, so like we said here, You've got 9a minus 2 lots of the a squared here, 9i minus 2a. In fact, sorry, don't, just ignore me for that last part, though. You don't need to substitute for the a. We keep the a, and we're just substituting in for the, the a squared here. So minus 2a squared, we substitute that in. And then when you actually simplify everything, what you'll obtain is that a cubed is equal to 13a minus 18i as required. So that just shows, again, another property of what the Kayla Hamilton theorem can do. It can be, we can manipulate algebraic um, expressions very easily with it. Now, we can also work with 3 by 3 matrices and get, um, you know, the characteristic equation. And we can also show that it satisfies it as well for the 3 by 3 matrix. And again, like we mentioned at the very start, we can also find the inverse of a 3 by 3 matrix using the Kayla Hamilton theorem. So again, it's quite a nice property of it. So first, any question like this, we need to find the characteristic equation. So you'll probably get sick of this by the end of doing FP2, um, but it's, it's a really important aspect. So make sure you're confident with this. It's very, very important. So... We find the determinant of a minus lambda i. Now this is a three by three matrix, so be very careful here how you're um, finding the determinant. So remember, if we want the upper left element, for example, we cross off this row and we cross off this column, and then we're multiplying through by the two by two matrix in this corner. Now I have um, a brief video on the determinant of a three by three matrix. So if you're unsure how to do that, be sure to check that out, guys. Um, but I'm assuming this is prior knowledge because it is in core pure um, so you should really know how to do it by now but if not be sure to check out that video uh, it's what through on that so what you get is your characteristic equation here so you get 1 minus lambda times lambda squared minus 2 minus 2 lots of lambda minus 4 and plus minus 1 plus 2 lambda so when you actually go to simplify this then what you obtain is this negative cubic so it's minus lambda cubed plus lambda squared plus 2 lambda plus 5 so this is our characteristic equation now. Um, if we multiply through by minus 1, we flip that into a positive cubic. And obviously, just make sure you multiply everything through by minus 1. And we set it equal to 0. So this is our characteristic equation. Now we can apply the Cayley-Hamilton theorem. But be very careful here. So by the Cayley-Hamilton theorem, remember, we need it in terms of a quadratic here, like they've demonstrated. So we've got lambda cubed. So we're going to replace that as m cubed, because we're working with the matrix m. So it's m cubed minus m squared, minus 2m, minus 5i. So this is the identity. And what we do is we need to reduce it into a quadratic. So to reduce this now, we have to multiply by the inverse of m, m to the minus 1, because this reduces each power by 1. So m cubed times m to the minus 1 gives you m squared. m squared times m to the minus 1 gives you m, and so on. If you've got the matrix m, e times by m inverse, we get the identity, and so on. So we reduce everything to a quadratic, and what this gives us, it gives us five lots of m inverse. Like they demonstrated here, these are the, uh, a couple of properties of the inverse that you've just got to be aware of, um, but you'll probably be aware of them by now, so just be careful with that. So what we get, we then obtain is 
m squared is equal to this two by two matrix here, uh, sorry, three by three matrix multiplication of m. So they're obtaining um, the substitution basically of what we're going to perform. So they've obtained that. Now we just need to simplify our algebra. So we're just going to simplify here. Um, and this is going to all simplify to give this. So the m squared, don't forget, is just what we worked out here. So 1, 3, 5, 3, 0, minus 1, 1, 4, 4. Now we're just going to substitute everything in. So m squared, so this is this, minus m, our original um, matrix. And then we've got the identity times by 2. And we're subtracting it. And then when you perform all this, so it's just matrix um, subtraction, we obtain minus 2, 1, 4, 4, minus 2, minus 3, and minus 1, 3, 2. Now, to find the inverse, just be very careful. All we need to do is substitute this back in and solve for m. Um, I'll solve for the inverse of m. So you're going to substitute this back in now, um, and then just you know perform the sub uh, correct calculations. So that would be this part um, here. That's where you got to substitute it back in. You substitute your value back in. Um, but that's that's just how we you know we get there for the last bit. Now I've not run through any questions um, on my own today, but I'm going to do on the next video. We're going to do mixed exercise. So we're going to go through all styles of questions um, from chapter five. Now, I hope that was okay. If there's anything that you're unsure about, or anything that was just a little bit confusing or you need more explanation, please do leave a comment below, guys. Um, I will happily reply and help as where I can. Um, so that would be Chapter 5 basically complete. We've got the mix exercise to go through. Um, we'll pick some questions out of that. But hopefully that's okay. Quite a nice chapter. Um, it's not the longest in the, in the textbook, um, but hopefully that's okay.